continue what we were doing the other day looking at quarterbacks. Maybe that was today. I don't know. Uh, I want to look at wide receivers. I want to look at some of the rookie wide receivers and see exactly how they've performed after one week in the preseason. There's 72 wide receivers, so I cannot go through every single one. Um, questions, comments, concerns about the wide receivers, please drop it in the comments. Please also remember, subscribe, like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What I want to do, though, is at least go through the first two rounds. The guys that got drafted in the first couple rounds, some of them did not participate, so we won't be talking about them. But I want to go through take a look at how these guys did and then just kind of look at some of the general highlights who graded out the highest in most yards etc cetera, etc cetera. so let us begin with jackson smith and jigba i think we all saw the highlight reel of him with the one-handed catch and all that stuff haven't heard as much hype recently i'm sure it's still going on out in seattle just hasn't reached all the way out here but um only got to run eight routes primarily from the slot it looks like 87.5 percent was from the slot that's as expected of the eight routes that he ran, though, four targets, three receptions. So 50% of the time when he ran a route, he got targeted. That in and of itself is impressive. Uh, 25 yards, 70.3 PFF grade, 68.9 receiving grade. Jordan Addison is next up. Vikings fans, I know, are very, very excited about his potential. From the stats, you can't glean a ton. This is kind of where I like PFF. The guy ran 13 routes. He caught one pass for 22 yards. What happened on all those other 12 routes, and how does that compare to all the other 72 wide receivers? That's where these grades come in. Um, again, 13 routes, three targets, one reception, 22 yards, but he was the third highest graded wide receiver. In both overall and receiving grade, he was the third highest. So PFF, for whatever reason, whatever he was doing, Vikings fans, go check the tape if, if you haven't already. They are extremely impressed with what he was able to do out there. Um, he was 0 for 1 in a contested catch, 60.4 passer rating when targeted, but um, fantastic start for the first round pick for the Minnesota Vikings. Next up is Quentin Johnson, who was taken 22 by the Chargers. PFF didn't like him quite as much, probably primarily because of his one drop. He ran 12 routes, six targets, three receptions for 10 yards, but he did have a touchdown on top of that. Obviously, six foot three, two fifteen. He's going to do a little bit more damage probably in that area. He's also zero for two in contested catches, which kind of sucks for his size being what it is. But sixty five point eight PFF grade, sixty five receiving grade for Quentin Johnson. Then you got Jalen Hyatt. Um, he was a, I guess he was a third round pick. I think you know what it is. He was at the. Why is Jalen Hyatt? Oh, I picked the wrong Hyatt. Let's skip him. I'm an idiot. I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. I'm looking at the wrong Hyatt. Uh, I don't think... Who was I looking for here? Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know. I have no idea why Hyatt is on here. Who was I looking for? I don't know why I do the things that I do. Um, next up, Zay Flowers didn't play. We know that. Jonathan Mingo I didn't have on here. So next up is Jaden Reed freaking Hyatt who is that why is he on here Jaden Reed to the Green Bay Packers second round pick pick 51 uh he only ran eight routes uh, again primarily from the slot 89 percent two targets two receptions 20 yards 65.7 grade 65 receiving grade uh he did have one contested catch 108.3 passer rating again from a grade standpoint it was fine but I think uh, overall you're pretty excited about that, especially just given the context of it. Not a lot of usage, um, targeted relatively highly considering that limited usage, and then you love to see those contested catches, especially for a smaller slot guy like Jaden Reed. Um, finally, Rasheed Rice is who we have. Uh, I don't think Marvin Mims is on here, unless that's who I clicked on instead of Hyatt because I'm stupid. I'm not entirely sure how that panned out. But Rasheed Rice, uh, second round pick 56 for the Kansas City Chiefs, had just a 56 PFF grade, 60 receiving grade, partially again because he did have a drop. Um, he ran 18 routes, four targets, three receptions, 30 yards, 95.8 passer rating. Let me just try real quick one time. Sorry if you hear the bedooping in your ears, just in case I clicked on. Yep. Okay. So there is no Marvin Mims. He did not play for the Denver Broncos. All right. Uh, we already mentioned Jordan Addison was the highest, uh, the the highest that we mentioned so far. Probably the guy to be most excited if you had to uh, massively overreact about somebody's potential in this season based on one game because Jordan Addison's actually going to play. But there were two guys graded higher than him. In second place was Sean Ryan, which is hilarious because we have a 
guard. But Baltimore Ravens, he had an 86.6 overall grade, 85.3 receiving grade, 18 routes. He caught four of seven for 37 yards. And then number one is Atlanta's, uh, Atlanta receiver Xavier Moore. Small, shifty guy, five foot nine, 180. He's actually an undrafted free agent out of Henderson State. He ran seven routes, caught two passes for 50 yards. I don't know what he did, man, but he, <laughs> PFF was super excited about it. Um, leading in yards is Nico Remigio. This is another guy. So I had some people that were calling into my Packers podcast, which you can see right over there. If you want to go ahead and take a picture of that, that'll take you over there if you want to listen. But um, a couple people calling in real jacked about Nico Remigio. He actually did lead with uh, four receptions, 71 yards. A.T. Perry was shortly behind. Both of these guys had fantastic grades, by the way. But six targets, six receptions, 70 yards, and a touchdown. Probably one of the more impressive. And then third would be Duntavian Wicks for the Green Bay Packers, who had a good day. On the uh, touchdown front, nobody had more than one. We only had nine wide receivers with touchdowns. So if you are on that list, if one of your rookies um, ended up with a touchdown, feel good about that. And then as far as passer rating, the highest goes to Jake Bobo in Seattle. Uh, Jake Bobo is an undrafted free agent, six foot four, two 206 for the Seattle Seahawks out of UCLA. Three targets, three receptions, 55 yards, and a touchdown. At the bottom of the list, the guys who had the lowest grades, let's just say, eh, no, let's leave it at overall grades. The bottom five, Trey Tucker out of Las Vegas. Theric Pitts, New England, who had two targets, one reception for three yards. Jalen Wayne out of Cleveland, Tyler Scott in Chicago, and then Bryce Ford Wheaton for the New York Giants. So uh, if I had to pick the winner so far, I, I, I would love to be able to say Jordan Addison, but the statistics just aren't there. Um, it's kind of leaning, in my opinion, toward A.T. Perry. Um, you can make a case for several people. Maybe Tank Dell was the fourth highest graded, five receptions, 65 yards, and a touchdown. I think that's probably the way that I would go. You could absolutely say Sean Ryan. The reason I don't want to say Xavier Malone is because he didn't play very much. He didn't produce very much. Sean Ryan, again, 37 yards, no touchdowns. If I had to pick somebody based on how they were graded as well as their production, A.T. Perry and Tank Dell are the two that so far I think have been... Um, the most impressive so anyways i appreciate you guys hanging out and uh catch me for the next one we'll take a look at some of the running backs